Have you ever sent your resumes to many employers but still did not get any response from them? One of the reasons is your resume may not be good enough. In fact, the quality of resume may affect your job application outcome. So, in order to get a chance of being interviewed, the first thing first is you need to create an impressive resume. Today, we are going to share with you how to write an impressive resume. Hi everyone, I'm Jess. Welcome to Job Majestic channel. Our channel will be focusing on the content related about job interviews or anything related about work. If you like the content like this, please subscribe our channel and don't forget to follow our social media. Today, we're going to share with you how to create an impressive resume. Self-introduction is the first thing in the resume that most of the interviewers would read. So, what are the skills that could create a better summary of yourself? First, don't be too casual or lengthy. I always come across many job seekers when it comes to write about their summary of themselves. It's always too lengthy or too casual. And this is a big no-no. For interviewers, self-introduction is always the first part that will read in your resume. So, if you did not write a good summary about yourself, probably you could create a bad impression to the interviewers. When you are writing the summary about yourself, your description should not be too short. I once come across some job seekers write only few words about that, or some of them write like a long essay. So this is a big no-no. A good summary of yourself should be just two or three sentences. Second, a summary with key points and content. Many people, when they write the summary about themselves, they will just include their personal details like name, age, address, and education levels. The correct way should, you should include the background of your industry, your skills and strengths, and the summary of your previous working experiences. If you're already a white collar, you could write a short description about your working experiences, your expertise, and your accomplishment. You could write in this way. I have five years experience in social media marketing. Familiar with Facebook, Instagram, and Google Ads. Used to generate 50,000 revenues and increased 30,000 followers in Instagram in 6 months. If you are a fresh grad without many working experiences, you could share more about your academic background. For example, which university you graduate from, your skills, and your preferred industry. You can write in this way. I am adaptable and responsible graduate seeking an entry-level position in video production industry. Graduate from ABC University with bachelor degree in graphic design. Familiar with Adobe PR and Photoshop. Education is a column to showcase your academic or technical background. It is also a very important column for the HR to understand your background better and to help them to identify if you are suitable for the position or not. First, fresh grads or interns. Always start with the latest and highest academic credentials. Include the name of your degree, institution, location, and the years of graduation. For example, if your highest level of education is bachelor degree, you can start with your bachelor degree first, following by diploma. If you have lots of achievements during your university days, you can present them in your resume. However, if you did not score well in your university days, that's fine. Try to think of is there any activities that you have participated before or is there any awards that you received? Try to relate that in your resume. Second, white collar or executive level. For those who have been working several years in a workplace, HR normally would pay more attention on the working experiences instead of your education background. Hence, you should highlight more about your working experiences in the resume instead and try to keep it short and concise. One or two highest education credentials should be enough. If you have any work-related certifications that you have obtained after your graduation, include that as well. On the column of working experiences, list down all your previous working experiences such as full-time and part-time jobs, internship jobs, or some freelance jobs if you have any. Include some key info such as company names, positions, duties, and your tenure. First, quantify your duties. For example, if today you're going to apply for the position of an accountant, try not to elaborate your duties in an ambiguous way. Many people tend to only include their duties in the working experience section. Many people will just include the duties like bookkeeping or tax filing. By doing so, it's very difficult for the interviewers to gauge your real capabilities. You can write in this way. Purchase products and equipments for three departments. 
accurately record purchases and reduce reconciliations discrepancies by 35%. Second, list down your working experiences with your achievements. You can list down your achievements after the working experiences. By doing so, you can impress the interviewers when the interviewer is reading about your working experiences. For example, you can write something like this. You were able to help the company to reduce the business expenditure by 50% or you were able to help the company to increase the revenue of 100,000 per year by implementing XXX strategies. Third, Arrange your working experiences accordingly. One of the most common mistakes that many job applicants would make is they will list down their work experiences in the wrong way. The correct way should be starting from the latest working experiences. Full-time experiences should be first highlighted, following by your part-time working experiences, your internship, and your freelance experiences, if you have any. It's better to include your freelance experiences in another column so that your resume could look more organized. Last but not least, remember to check your grammar after you have drafted the version of your resume. Many people will write about their positions or working experience in their resume, but very often they will miss out one very important element, which is achievements. The column of achievements on your resume is something very important to enhance your resume. It helps you to highlight your attractions and your values. So, how do you include achievements on your resume? First, Draft a list of your achievements. Write your achievements one after another and keep a record. Talking about achievements, it might not be the activities that you have participated or the awards that you have won. It could be the CGPA at your university or college, voluntary works that you have done before, positions of your club, or as well as the personal goals that you have realized. Other achievements might inclusive of the outstanding works that you have done for your previous company or some recognitions. Second, choose only three most important ones to include in your resume. Well, you might have a lot of interesting working experiences or achievements in your life, but you need not showcase all of them. Choose only three most important ones to include in your resume. Another tip is choose those that can relate to the position that you are applying. Interviewers do not normally spend a lot of time to read your resume. A good resume usually do not more than three pages. Third, Showcase your achievements with figures. If your previous achievements are related to your previous positions, include that under the column of working experience. For example, if your previous job is telemarketer, you could say something like this. You receive average 60 calls in one working day and you are able to solve 90% of the customer inquiries. Write your achievements in details. Try to quantify your achievements because data is a good way for the interviewer to understand your capabilities in a better way. If your achievements are not related to the position that you are applying, try to include this in another table so that your resume could look more organized. Some job seekers might ask, should I include my achievements if the achievements are not related to the position that I'm applying? The answer is yes. However, you should prioritize the achievements that are related to your position first. For example, if today you're applying for the position of graphic designer, design work should be prioritized first following by other achievements. When you write about your skill sets on your resume, make sure that you can list down your skill sets in a detailed way. Always try to relate your skill sets to your previous job and also the position that you are applying. Another tip for you is always relate your skill sets with some data. First, analyze your working capabilities. Before you write about your skill sets, you should figure out the required skill sets of the new job application. What you can do is you could always refer to the job ad Find out the job requirements and try to relate your skill sets to it. Second, list down relevant capabilities. List down your skill sets that's related to the job application that you are applying. Try not to include too many types of skill sets. 8 to 20 are just fine. For example, if you are applying for a designer job and you are so familiarized with the Adobe software, you can prioritize this skill set rather than other skills. Third, Define the strength of your skill sets. After you have listed down all the skill sets, you need to define the level of the strength of each skill set. For example, if you are a fresh grad, you might know how to use a lot of softwares, but you might not be expert on this. So, in this case, you need to provide a score to identify the level of strength of each skill set. If you would like to break down the skill sets, you could refer to this design method. If you are not showcasing the capabilities of the skill sets, you could refer to this design method. 
talking about writing about your skill sets, that's a very important point for you. Try to make sure your skill sets are specific. Details of the skill sets must not be too unspecific. For example, if you list down your skill set as good communication, it's very hard for the interview to justify about that. If you are a designer, you list down your skill set as design, it's also very hard for the interviewers to quantify about your capabilities. If possible, try to relate these skill sets with relevant data. You can also ask your previous employers or colleagues to write you some referral letters to showcase that you have possessed these kind of skill sets. Another tip for you is, if you are good at different languages, you can also include this on your resume. You can attach the language certificates on your resume. By doing so, it probably can increase the chance of getting interview invitation. If you think today's video is helpful for you and your friend, please like it and share it. If you have any questions, you can leave your questions in the comment section box below. I'm Jess and I will see you next Monday at 7pm.